I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. If we do not trust any friends or family members, I repeat, do not trust them. You, yeah, you did. Thank you so much. I feel like all my conversations with you uh, this evening are beginning with like questions to sort of uh, <laughs> test, <laughs> test the water. Um, but uh, I, I won't I won't open this as a question. I'll just open it as a statement. I watched uh, everything everywhere at all all at once. Finally. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, on Friday. So you're and continuing your theater journey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm uh, yeah. I, well, I didn't see it in the theater, but I'm I'm continuing my uh you know, keeping on top of the pops and yeah, this was, uh, yeah, this was a good one. Um, it operates in like three different levels. I'm not going to spoil anything, mm-hmm. uh, but it's kind of like a mother daughter story. And then it's also like a time traveling or, or dimension hopping. Um, and this is clear from the trailer. So I hope that's not a spoiler, um, kind of sci-fi story. And then also kind of, a. you ever seen I heart Huckabees? Shh. Shit, I can't. Is that is that the one with the existential detective? Yes, the that, existential okay, detective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie, this movie is kind of swimming in those waters. Okay. Uh, at the same time as it's 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 you know kind of a, a kind of a sci-fi romp and and kind of a, a mother daughter story. It's and like a very affecting one. Uh, it's it's also I I would pair it with I Heart Huckabees if you wanted to like. It's kind of this year's this decades i heart huckabees i would say all right cool yeah yeah that's i that one's definitely on the radar i i want i have a good i feel like um i feel excited to see that but i'm glad that it got the good review from you yeah yeah it was a banger um and really funny and like very straight yeah very strange very funny very uh yeah good and once you see it i, I look forward to talking to you about it because um yeah it's it's a thing all right least, yeah yeah, you know, at the very least, it's worth talking about. Um, it's <laughs> much like uh, much like Japanese comics. I don't know. Let's just get right into it, uh, <laughs> since we spent so much time, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Extinction Agenda audience. Um, we uh, yeah, we had some troubles here. We spent like a half hour sort of um, troubleshooting, but it seems as if we're good. Uh, so today. If you'll allow us, we're going to we're going to talk about Tadeo Suge's Suge's Trash Market, uh, published by Drawn Quarterly in like 2015, translated and edited by Ryan Holmberg. Uh, these comics are largely published 68 to uh, 72, 1968 to 1972 in Japan, in Garo magazine or in one instance in the um in the in the short story called Trash Market, in uh, Yagyo uh, magazine, whatever the fuck that is. Um, yeah, I um, I got you to read this because um, I'm I'm a Ryan Holmberg guy. I uh, I really I like this project that Ryan Holmberg's engaged in, and so I I whenever something comes out or I learn that I can get some Holmberg action, I I, I make sure it's part of my library. Uh, cause this is, this is kind of some down home cooking from another culture, right? And, uh, I know you're into Japanese culture and I thought maybe you might be into this. I don't know if this is most representative of, of the, um, of Gaikiga or whatever, the dramatic pictures, the sort of alt, alt comics of, of 1970s Japan, but, um, here it is. So I don't know. What'd you, what'd you think? It's cool. It's definitely got a different flavor to it, right? Like a different vibe. Yeah. Uh, something we're not used to seeing from representations of Japan, um, particularly in our culture. But uh, even I think that there's even within Japanese culture a sort of a different. I mean, this is this is really depicting the uh, the underbelly of it uh, in a different way. Like I mean, like obviously things about yakuza are very popular in film. Uh, manga you know you, you get you get a slice of, of the underworld but this is like i mean i i'm very resistant to calling people trash <laughs> like when he yeah. says like when he says i'm dealing with trash in many cases very accurate uh, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's cool it's interesting um so it's it's got a very um a very 
journalistic quality to it. Although I, I really want to talk about because he uh, Suge is a, just an interesting guy. Like his position mm-hmm. in society is really interesting because it's not it's it's complicated. Um, but tell it, me about uh, oh sorry, follow up with that. But then tell me about Holmberg because I don't know about his project. Oh okay, so uh, well I was going to say like um, today Suge's position is even more interesting when you. So his brother is uh, Yoshiharu Suge, and he's he's like he's an indie darling. Like he's a he's a tastemaker amongst sort of um, Gaikiga manga, and and even here in in North America, he's like a big he's a big name. Uh, and it's his older brother, and so it's yeah, I think it's his older brother, and so Suge's underclass, um, or, or Tadeo's underclass status is is even like it has another level to it, even on top of of everything that I'm, I'm sure you're referring to. Um, yeah. And then the Holmberg project. So, so Ryan Holmberg, I don't, I don't, okay. Well, to, basically he just, he's a translator, but he's also, he's also an editor. He provides like extensive essays to everything that he produces. So he, so he's like, he's unearthing, and it's not even really unearthing because like it's it's popular media. It's like it's it's you know in in Japan the, these aren't secret comics or everything. Goro magazine's a big deal, but here in North America we don't know anything about it. Um, he he's basically Holmberg has trying to for North American audiences taken manga and Japanese comics from like 1940 even like early even early Tezuka stuff like prior to Astro Boy uh, and just and uh, and to package it and present it and contextualize it for a North American audience uh, who's mm-hmm. interested in, in history and literature. Uh, so he's a bit of a curator, a bit of a, a historian yes. of, of manga for, for yes. our purposes. It's like to, to expose the West and, and kind of put things in context. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And does a really great job and works with a, a number of like dedicated publishers who who treat the material well it seems uh and is constantly yeah. working like there's a steady stream of, of this guy's work coming out and it's it's always exciting for me because i can read a bunch of books but I, I like i don't have context and i don't have an introduction and i you know i don't know necessarily what to think of it i can i don't want to be told what to think uh and i yeah. don't think I, I don't think holmberg's trying to do that either um no i read that back material and it, i didn't mm-hmm. get that sense it's mm-hmm. very um I think we just have to talk about him a little bit because like his, his work is very much tied to biography, but it's also like, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is an influence for, for someone like our listeners may be more familiar with is uh, Adrian uh, Tamina too, like the optic nerve. So that's the older brother. That's the, that, that's the Yashiharu um, Suge. It's so far as I understand anyway, um, where Tadeo's, I think, you know, less, less of a property. Um, but I, you know, I could be totally wrong about that, but I, yeah, I do. I, w- I wouldn't like, I wouldn't want to point to Tom and A's influences too much. Cause like they, they also like, they really, uh, had a hand in bringing back, uh, in, in introducing Tatsumi's, you know, also published by drawn and quarterly. Um, I think, I think basically like, Perhaps, uh, you know, and I'm really speaking out of my element here. Um, I, I think it's just like that whole scene kind of. Uh, yeah. You know, Tomine kind of comes out of. That's true, because he does heal. He'll say like Daniel Cloth and um, like uh, Love and Rockets. And um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that sort of material, too, as, as big influences on him. I guess just reading it it reminded me very much of optic nerve. So maybe I'm, I'm inserting my own feeling into that. No, you're, I, no, you're totally, I, I don't think you're right. Yoshihiro's work is the older brother's work is very similar to this work. It's, okay. it's got, it's got a different, it's not as hard. This is pretty hard. And I, I yes. don't think T- Tomine's work is not hard. Like this is, he's, he's a little lighter. And yeah. I think that's more in keeping with the older brother's work. So I, okay. I think that's why I, I have that response. That makes um, sense. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> this guy's yeah. life. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We definitely got to talk about bi- biography. Um, 
so he graduates like well obviously he comes from a like the lower like i think he's the the lower class areas of uh, not class but like the poor mm-hmm. areas of tokyo slums um he uh he grows up in a somewhat abusive household um mm-hmm. and uh leaves like basically finishes middle school which i, I think in japan they said goes to to age 14 so he like he basically graduates at 14 starts working and works like his ass off like i didn't much think of that time oh christ yeah okay, go on yeah i didn't put that to, in my brain yeah okay, yeah go on and yeah. just doing like for the most part menial jobs but what he really kind of what he really kind of ends up doing is working in a blood bank um and uh just like dealing with big vats of like so they would have um programs where they would just pay you for blood and and a lot of uh people who are down on their luck would just kind of come there a lot of alcoholics and shit they call it lose for blues and mm-hmm. uh they just they just kind of show up get uh do their transfusion uh come back as soon as they possibly can uh and then the nurses would kick them out if their blood density is too low but uh he's he basically works like <laughs> collecting bats like drums of blood washing yeah. equipment uh setting things up and then at night, like they would just like there's a duty where you'd sneak out and the blood had expired, they would just secretly like just pour it down the drain, which yeah. is really fucked to think about. No, I'm reading this for ten years. Today I worked at Nihon Pharmaceuticals where he washed blood collecting equipment, swabbed toilets, secretly dumped waste blood into city sewers, and later, after pro do- donation campaigns, forced the industry to find new sources of blood, chopped and pressed human placentas. Jesus. Fuck. Yeah, this guy's like he's literally a wash in blood. Like he's so fleshy, you know. Like it's yeah. so yeah. He's just down to earth. Is it's you couldn't find a better metaphor. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and I think he talks about like the way he talks about it, it's like in in the um, you know he gives his material. own spin on this. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's like yeah, it was a great, it was a good job. I was I was happy to have it. Like this was mm-hmm. the thing. Although also the way he talks about it is like. I got hepatitis C and I'm certain that it's from just nobody <laughs> yeah. about standards of cleanliness. So we just stuck our hands in there. If you had a cut or something like that. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. For the first two years of my job went by without incident, almost a thousand people a day came to sell their blood. Yeah. And, and this is like, and it's, and it's his, not only his life allows him to, to enter into sort of the slums and lower quarters of, of Japanese culture at this time or Japanese society at this time, like, he's at the center of of it's disgusting you know like like these blood banks are are also like banks for people like loan centers um you know yeah, when they talk really about it explicitly sleazy. yeah like there's an the underbelly there for sure yeah it's not not really on the level mhm yeah so it's just a yeah a real unique position really like yeah that's funny uh and also, you know, like kind of sad, but he seems fine. I mean, he's still making comics yeah. and stuff, but and only supports himself through comics for a brief. Like there was a one period where he was able to do it, like when he was younger, for six months, and then mm. I think it was like sixty-eight to uh, seventy-one or something like that with Goro. Was that mm-hmm. sorry, that's what it's called, right? And so yeah. they like for a brief time, he had enough profile that uh, he was able to independently support himself on comics and. Uh, mm. But after that stretch, you know, his brother kind of got him into work for him a bit, but the the work kind of dried up and he mm-hmm. just starts, he goes back to the blood bank and, and uh, still does that sort of manual blue collar labor to this day, as far as I understand. Yeah. Or at yeah, least at least what... the time this was published, he's probably, he might be retirement age now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess it's tough to, you know, tough to say, but um, yeah, the, yeah. So it's really, um it's yeah it's neat you know like like some some comics artists uh will they enter into the i think this is even i, I forget if it's in the holmberg stuff or it's in the, the suge's own uh rem, you know talking about it but like you know some comics artists they they end up working professionally as comics artists cause, and so they're kind of they take a step out of society you know, and, and they just like they would just be working with their memories of 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 how it is to like get up and fucking work, <laughs> you know, like yes. their work is different. I'm not saying they're not working. It's it's labor, but it's a it's a it's a it's the the labor of someone who's um, it's a hothouse flower. Uh, and yeah, he he did not make that escape, you know, and he's kind of so he's just kind of like a 
that's why it feels journalistic. But it's I don't I don't think it is though. It doesn't have that. It's not like reading. Uh, well, it's actually shit. I've never read. Um, I can't remember his name, so I'm not even going to bring it up. There's just there's that comic, uh, Joe Seiko. There's the word I'm looking for. Um, you know, doing doing actual like comics journalism, which is a different thing. Very like a purposeful expose. I I don't feel that's what's happening here. I think it's just no, like it just feels right. like reminiscence. It's, it's so that's the other like another interesting element to him too because he's not like so he's not really a labor guy. He doesn't mm. really have um he doesn't really have faith in mass uh like mass um collective action. Uh mm. he just he's very cynical about that. Um and he's very cynical about government, uh doesn't really trust people on top. Um but he but he's not he's not like a Charles Bukowski kind of figure either. He doesn't really have contempt for like uh, like you know highfalutin stuff. Like he's he's he reads literary fiction. So he's kind of he's mm. in this interesting subject position. And I think that artistry really presents itself in the work too, because they're they're stories that present themselves as like slice of life uh like moments um, of, of change or transition or, or things like that. But they're the way that they're structured can be very art, artistic. I think the best way to, I, honestly, that's a perfect seg to getting into the first short story of this collection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, on. yeah, yeah. Like up on, up on the hilltop, Vincent van Gogh. I don't know how to pronounce that fucking guy's name. <laughs> uh, 19, 1968. So this is the first one. So like one of the things I had to keep in mind while reading this is, like this is this is curated, uh, and so if there are thematic consistencies, if there is, there there is a way of thinking about these works. It's like it's kind of Ryan Holmberg's way of thinking about it. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, though, I it does seem to me that there's a coherency here. You know, like it seems, uh, and some of some of the things that we see in this story will will echo throughout the other ones. Uh, so if it is a curation, if it is like, um. If there's more work that sort of demonstrates that this is not the actual Tadeo Suge, then fine. But I'm I'm I buy it, you know, like I I buy this as a, as representative of of the guy's work. Definitely. Um, uh, particularly since there's another collection, um, uh, Slum Wolf, <laughs> which 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 carries on also by Ryan Holmberg, uh, but carries the you know goes late into the later 70s. Oh, Very new title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, he's got best titles, good covers too. Anyway, um, anyway. So let's let's. Uh, this is my fault. I'm getting off topic. Um, yeah. Why did Van Gogh create so many self portraits? Is like the opening question of this story, and it feels you know getting back to the biography, uh, and why it was important. I agreed for us to talk about the biography is because like these are so autobiographical stories, and he's like the opening story is him not comparing himself to Van Gogh, but well, he is because he's drawing parallels, mm -hmm. uh, not, not explicit parallels, but there's just something like, uh, he's, he's placing his life story or, or the social events of his period within that frame. Yeah. Uh, and I think with, there's, there's yeah. something of an artistic statement in this too, by like, by way of Van Gogh. Go on. Okay. Well, um, it's, I mean, first of all, I think that he's very interested in uh, um, locating the labor of art in the story. Uh, so he's, mm -hmm. he talks about Van Gogh, but he talks about Van Gogh a lot as as a worker, as how his, his experience uh, as an art dealer, um, how he's, uh, you know, like he, he just hated doing it. He would just talk people out of buying stuff. Like he, he trashed art whenever he could, and he's completely miserable. All of his coworkers hated him, but... Um, you know, he, he just felt that art tried too hard to appeal to mass taste. And I think that um, Tadao is uh, drawing a, a parallel uh, somewhat with his with his own work. And and, and that idea of being. Um, so the character like we, we're not sure for sure that this is Tadao, like it's it's a character very much like Tadao. But he, mm -hmm. he sits he sits at home. Basically, he's a student, uh, maybe like fresh or closely out of art school and he just he's copyist like he he constantly reproduces these pictures of, of van gogh's self-portraits um mm. and so that's that's his work basically and he has his friend goro who kind of comes in 
uh, and uh, he's like, he's this rowdy kind of student, like, you know, oh, God, I've got grilled guts here. Have you? Let's yeah. eat that and drink. And, you know, like we, we really got to fight for our rights. And like we, he wants to get involved with the, in the labor movement. And uh, he's, um, he's actually assaulted a police officer as we find out. And uh, the cops come looking for him. But, uh, but, um, you know, the, the Goro is kind of giving him shit about being this painter. He's like, well, you know, like, why do you always just copy these paintings? And mm-hmm. I think that there's a question there, you know, like what, what is, what is art? to do what does it do what's the implication of, of being an artist in a time where where all these like events are happening and and people are mm. suffering and shit like that and i think that there's something i think one thing he's saying in this piece is that to, to kind of wrap it all up is that mm-hmm. that statement of like he wants to be that camera like he wants to capture everything and he's not going to sanitize it he just wants to 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 show you ex- like what's going on in these corners of society yeah that's fair i'm gonna i, I guess i have two qualifiers to that um the the first is i think you're i feel that your framing misses uh a, an important little bit in that it's so fine he's he's anti-art or whatever but what's the what's the real impetus for that and that's that's framed you know he experienced his first heartbreak he was devastated his lands later landlady's daughter was already engaged and blah 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 people did not find his forthrightness endearing unable to get over the heartbreak he came to disdain art dealing um and I, I wonder, like, it, is that the comparison that he's experiencing in this instance? You know, like he's he, like uh, to Dow's and thanks for the correction on that, because that's probably a better way of uh, pronouncing it. Um, he's uh, he's deeply sad. He's deeply troubled. Um, and so so I and, and I think that's maybe also where he. And again, I don't know anything about Van Gogh or Van Gogh or whatever. Um, it, I'm 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 strictly taking what the text is giving given me, mm-hmm. and uh, I you know I wonder if, if there's that, and then and I guess the other thing I would say to qualify, or add to what you were saying is that um, there's that scene where he's so it does he does want to look at everything he's certainly looking at everything and he is interested in in the laboriousness of of painting but there's there's those moments when he's in the tunnel um those those tunnels under the city and he's yeah. he's you know i'm a giant crab lurking in these wet holes or a cowardly yeah. little mouse and he's he's his imagination is is within this you know he's uh he's witnessing it but he's also showing like a, you know he's a sort of a creative spirit within this this place which i i think the art sells as well but it you know a, a, an artist could have left that out uh, that he, you know, that at night he would just walk around hungry, pretending to be things in the tunnels, uh, and then, you know, and then want to go back and talk to his pal. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's revealing, but it's, it, it's an interesting bit to have put in. That's uh, true. Yeah. yeah. And I think that there's a psychological element too, which you're, which you're getting at too, where I think that there is a bit of a sense of, maybe inadequacy like the you know constantly comparing himself to this great master um Mm -hmm. and maybe even worrying about i think i think that there's also worry about so like i'm on the fringes of society i'm I'm struggling i'm desperate i'm an artist but like all i can do is copy this dude's art and um he really like i think that there's a yeah the sense that maybe he's slipping because as he goes through those tunnels it's like um you know, clang 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 i think the reason my stomach's weak is because of the fumes like all these things are getting to him and mm-hmm. um and that uh when his uh co-worker like kind of comes up behind him yes um and he's like uh what do you say yeah aren't you i'm calling you can't you hear me are you deaf and he just says i cut off my my left ear the guy's like what who did so he's just make <laughs> that explicit parallel to to the life of van gogh yeah yeah well, he covers it up with his hand, you know, like it's, it's, it's him being clever. You know, like he's just like, it's a, it's an, it's a moment of like explicit identification, uh, yeah. as, as he's popping back and forth between the two lives. Um, and yeah, well, like it's, you know, he dude commits suicide at the end and like, this is, it's not a suicide note, but it's someone who like want, like flirts at the edge of that romantic image of the, of the dark artist too, you know, like I, I, on the, on the one hand, I want 
he's drawing the parallels and i and i think it's it's worthy you know it's he's he's not like a, a fine artist or whatever but it's an interesting inspiration uh but there's also something of a sort of naive romanticism in this like something out of the 19th century uh yeah. identifying with uh, the the artist to this extent and and like Oh, I'm going to commit suicide for my art, which he obviously never did. He's yeah. continued, you know, like. A, um, yeah, but well, I wonder if one know. thing that he's working at here is that anxiety of influence or even just. Um, the sense that having to make a way his way in the world, like is is really fucking tough and uh, that he just like he's not sure if it's going to drive him crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and he, like, you know, like, he's, like, I really like this one over in the corner of my room, you know, like, it's called Worn Out. Uh, yes. Yeah, and and he's moving from job to job. He's trying on these different, like, ways of being. And Tadao is very likely also doing those things at this time, you know? Like, he's, he flirts with, they, these short stories kind of, they point to someone who have have tried and have been or, or maybe witnessed different ways of being and, you know, flirted with them. Uh, you know, like what, what you do is what you, your job is not necessarily what, who you are. Um, it's not the sum total, uh, of, of everything. Uh, it's kind of like where you make your living a lot of the time. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what the point of me saying that is like, I guess there was just lots of elements that, that aren't captured by that, one f- towering fact about himself uh absolutely you know, work- yeah 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 and he brought up the uh the portrait worn out which i believe is um it is a painter of a, of a laborer uh it was just kind of oh, like shit. yeah just not a self-portrait like, yeah, got his right. head in his hands like just uh you know like just this um it's the it's the one that appeals to to this uh to this artist to dow which is like yeah it's like that idea of like labor just kind of Drying people up or just grinding them down. Well, what is he like? God, I, you know, like they say, for a salary man, sleep is also part of the job. And oh God, you know, like that's that we we maybe I know he this book's not interested in in the labor movement or anything, but like it's shit like that that the labor movement tries to eliminate. You know, like that's yeah. why we have the Employment Standards Act. You need twelve, you know, eleven hours of rest between shifts, so that way, yeah. like. Um, well, actually, still even in that it's circumstance that, uh, yeah, sleep is part of the job. This one kind of depicts part of his problem with the labor movement, though, is that like he works in this factory and uh, like it's just, yes. there's this really shitty solidarity because like the, the the union bosses keep getting promoted and then they want nothing to do with the union or um, any any of the changes that they've been promising. So it's just sort of this endless system of corruption mm-hmm. uh, that he's experienced. Well, they're just uh, unable to. So I, you know, I, I, I have a perspective on this and uh, this is a tactic that employers will use. Uh, it, it, like if you're if you're strong, you know, like they'll be like, ah, it looks like you're part of management now. And, uh, and then once you end up in management, it's like individuals have to make that hard choice between. Yes. You know, solidarity and and, and personal prosperity. Uh, and it's a good tactic. It's a good tactic. And I, I'm not surprised to see it. Uh, employed here um yeah um and that's yeah yeah from the company it's a way to weaken the union yeah and i was just like yep um and yeah but it's uh i don't know if it's corruption that but maybe just the company sucks Uh, i think that's that's probably a bit of it too oh definitely yeah 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 um yeah I like the uh, so one of the qualities of of Gaikiga manga is uh, not Gaikiga, uh, Gaikiga comics, I guess, which is they they use that word, I'm told through reading uh, to you know it's dramatic pictures rather than manga, which is I'm told in my memory whimsical pictures, you know, like it's like sort of playful images, and so they're trying to be a little more realistic. But you'll notice ma- many of the figures like in this are very cartoony. But then they they exist in this naturalized background or this highly stylized background. Yes, very uh, true. 
Yeah. And I, you know, it's stupid to say, but I love, I love it. <laughs> like it's so, uh, they, their figures are cartoony, but they're a little more realistic than, than otherwise you'd see. And yeah, there's just this, all this cross hatching and all this like deep shadows and, uh, sometimes the images aren't even really comprehensible. You, you do get this. And this is, I think where maybe the journalistic element comes in. Like when you see the images of the factory, it's, it's not as if you're seeing what's in the factory. It's like, a uh, just someone who sketched it on the job, uh, like a rough, a rough sketch of what everything looks like, uh, and all the sounds and steams and stuff like that. A lot of chiaroscuro stuff here black well obviously it's black and white but um and then also a lot of negative space which i think is going to play more into other stories but it's it's just very very stylized very very cool yeah the reproductions of the paintings are, are kind of interesting too yeah it, it's almost like i mean it, it seems like his style becomes even a bit more simplified as it goes on although that of course could just be the uh the curation again i did find sometimes mm-hmm. the uh like it's hard to tell characters from from um like a part especially when there's a lot of them like in uh in trash market yeah in trash market i'm like is that the same person making the yeah, same face and yeah exactly yeah yeah um do, uh, do we have anything else on this one i don't um, think so yeah yeah, I, I just like it as a as a sort of statement of or like, I don't know, early foundation of the artist, like statement of purpose. It seems that way. It it yeah. really does. At the very least, it uh, it offers a good framing because he's so young. Like when you said he was 14, like these images of him. He's so young, he's even drawing himself so young, like far younger than any of the characters that we're going to see throughout this story. Very true. And yeah, so it, it whether or not there's. It you know it feels like a, a a casting you know like here here's how I want to be viewed, here's the framing for for the work that I do, and and how I see myself, um, and what I'm concerned with yeah yeah so really great opening, um you know right from the first line just you know, couldn't have done it better, um rather than go through because I don't think all I don't think all of these are as good as all yeah. the others like I, I don't there's a couple I don't really so. What uh, what else jumped out to you out of the stories? What what was the other? I think the two that really kind of stuck with me. Uh, I've been thinking about a lot. Definitely trash mm-hmm. market, fantastic, mm-hmm. and uh, just gently goes the night. Because what the fuck? Like yeah, God, right? Is fucking weird, <laughs> man. Yeah. Um. The uh, I, yeah, like I said in our in our text, I was um. I was reading some of this with Matthew. He really enjoyed a tale of absolute and utter nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> That's just hilarious. like this. Yeah, just like everybody's done. like it was that scene where the guy like cuts his own guts out or whatever. Oh and, my god. Yeah. He was like, What's happening there? And I read the narration to him and he was like, <sighs> you know, when he's really interested in something, he starts breathing really heavy and he just like focuses. Um he went through the whole thing, he laughed at all the images. Um wow. yeah. yeah. For those at home, that one is, right. uh, it basically just depicts like a, not even like a student riot, like just a, a like a, a riot. It starts out with some real extinction agenda talk. Actually, I was laughing to myself. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> he said, talking about inflation and shit, like how shitty like prices are and like, you know, yeah. just, uh, everything sucks. And then it gets yeah. uh, to some very non extinction agenda territory of like these guys just like deciding, let's just murder every, let's, let's find the cops and just start murdering people. And uh, yeah, we're not for that, ladies and gentlemen. But these people are. And uh, they just, uh, yeah, it's just like they show up. There's a police riot in gear. And it's just like page after page of them, like just in this bloody, brutal brawl. People get cracked think... on the head, blood everywhere. Yeah, it's so cartoony. There's no backgrounds or whatever. Like, it's just... Um... It's all motions. It, yeah, I, I, it's not the same at all, but I guess I was kind of thinking of Gene Colan when at, at his most sort of flowy, you know, like his images are very, um, th- this is super cartoony and, and not like that at all. But uh, w- during the action, it, it's like a whirlwind of these like smeared figures everywhere. Um, I, and I think it's, so here it's, you know, this has nothing to do with the people. So first of all, he's like, they're talking about the cops. They're like dirty bastards. All they care about is the rich. 
doesn't matter what party, they're all filthy. So there's like this sort of nihilistic, uh, not well, it's not nihilistic at this point. It's sort of apolitical. It's just like we're run by oligarchs, which, you know, that's that's extinction talk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, but then we then yeah, this has nothing to do with people or masses or any of those groups with big ideas about leadership. I'm not talking about revolution or even reform. As long as human desire exists, as long as humans exist, it's going to be the same over and over again, no matter who controls the government. Which maybe that is extinction talk. Um, but that's that's kind of the driving force behind this. They're just like vengeance. Yeah, well, just, yeah, yeah, right? We're just always yeah. going to get fucked, so we might as well just go out in a blaze of glory. Fuck these guys. And yeah. that's that's exactly it. It's, it's, this it is, is like, this. Terif- like, this Lou Reed kind of looking guy, like, it's just, mm-hmm. like, this terrifying speech about, you know, there's so many people worth killing. Prime Minister Sato, for example, we could blow up the parliament building or the imperial palace. How about killing the president of some big company or your local parliament member or a college student? The possibilities are endless or the choices are endless. It's like, yeah. wow, no thanks. Yeah. Well. yeah. But uh, they got like a thousand. How many? I think it's, they said they got a thousand people for, you know, for this. They mm-hmm. just started striking. Yeah. And, you know, my understanding is this this is kind of reflective of that's why I shared some of that stuff. Like there were there were riots at this time uh, with respect to. President President Sato, uh, he you know, and he shows up in some other, you know, Tatsumi uh, in Goodbye as a as a thing about President Sato. So I think it's kind of like a Richard Nixon guy for them uh at at that time or or maybe a trump figure or a bolsonaro or or whatever the fuck okay and yeah and he's kind of i i you know they're kind of so it's an economic boom i gather uh but you know it's also one of those moments where like the poor are getting left behind and the students are kind of being marginalized and there's this also maybe conservative element to it because the perception is that japan's selling out to america like we, you know, we right, we're right, letting right. all these American bases and stuff like that. So like what's also motivating this is, is a sort of, uh, impotence on, on the part of this, this feeling of, of, uh, this like social conservative element where they're just like, no, J- you know, Japan for Japan, you know, like sovereignty space, like we don't, we don't let the Americans in and, and, uh, it's kind of like a concerns about continued invasion of the body politic. But it's missing from this story, but it's also totally there because uh, that's, you know, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, my my very, very limited understanding is is that that's one of the things that was kind of contributing to all this. And I, I it, well, the characters in some of the other stories talk about that, maybe even in this one. Um, uh, actually, no, it's in it's in on the Van Gogh story, protests versus Sado in Vietnam, Okinawa. Uh, they're talking about like, yeah, it's pretty soon Japan's just going to be one American base that's uh, right, or, yeah. or something like that. So so I think that's what's what's also motivating the this this violence. This just like this feeling like just we're just getting fucked, maybe not even by Japan, maybe by like world powers, by like the imperial superpower beyond us. Uh, but but Tadao doesn't talk about it in those terms. But I, I think you get I Myself, I put it in that context because uh, because the because nothing comes of it uh, like whatsoever, like except, except for that dynamite that goes off and that guy. <laughs> that's really like that guy. His arms got blown off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. Oh, yeah. The guy like he's like, oh, it's that on your back. Oh, like this. This hand oh, has stuck to me ever since. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite question was like, why won't it let go? And I was like, mm, I don't know. It's a dis- dis- dismembered hand. It's like for, I don't know what to tell you. It's they just like, do oh, that. Yeah. Um, but like he so it just they talk about the they're in front of the Imperial Palace and like nothing's happening. The Imperial Palace is just dark. And yeah. the only thing that's happening is just that they're getting beaten to death by these cops. And um, definitely getting their licks in. But yeah, it's not mm-hmm. not a good uh, not really. Yeah, it's just it's just completely self annihilating. Mm-hmm. It's a stalemate for sure. I think that's part of I think. um in one of the essays, uh, I think Suge himself was sort of loosely involved in some of the protest 
movements yes. but yeah, they got yeah. swept up into it just by, yeah, by yeah. virtue of the fact of being like the union representative that they elected mm-hmm. or something like that but yeah. uh, he really i think it's pretty clear that uh he would have distanced himself from, or maybe that's what he sees as the end result of, of what it would be that there's just no point to, or no, um, no, no good outcome to come from, from uh, like violent revolution. Mm -hmm. Although at the same time, like he, he's obviously like as portrait of the artist as an assassin, you know, portrait of the artist as a rebel. Uh, He's going headlong with a fucking katana. Yeah. (laughs) Into all the the cops, you, you know, yeah and yeah and he and he sees like and then you know it goes it goes right back to the you know president sato like just that guy swing moving that hat um so that's what it means and like what you know like i'm kind of, you're kind of left wondering like what the what does it mean i don't but, know what it means yeah yeah what was that revelation like just like to to see the empty hat and yeah. then to you know yeah it's it it feels like a really strong powerful political statement but i don't know what the statement was i agree um, i felt like bounce and it, i don't even know what's happening at the end like he's charging at the line of cops he's like like you say like mm-hmm. a samurai then yeah. he falls and is it that he slips on blood or something like that because he's like there's blood underneath them but it, it doesn't seem to be all coming from him what mm-hmm. so that's what it means splat falls into the blood yeah is he dead yeah he's got a little like he's got a little the swirly eyes for eyes yeah 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 Maybe? but I think, yeah, I think, and this is like his last sort of, and, and I, I, you know, all the images that we've seen fall generally, except for, except for when we see like the, um, the buildings are depicted like these mountains up in the clouds. Uh, and, and so whenever there's any like sort of this monumental architecture, it's very crosshatched, it's very full and dark. And, but generally speaking, there's no backgrounds. It's, it's a lot of like white on, a lot of a lot of negative space uh, and and fluid line and and stuff like that but then this final image it's all black yeah uh, and like a monumental thing and it's just like that you know it's just this monumental image of of the president at that time doing this little hat thing yeah uh, and they said that that image was censored in the uh in the goro comic which led to one of the editors splitting and like founding this uh independent thing that like heavily featured Suge's work because he felt really bad about that. But Suge oh, himself was just oh, kind of like, okay. he was like, the, I don't really care that much. Like, it's fine. Like, apparently, yeah. um, like right wing thugs that supported the uh, the president would like would crack down on anyone who like criticized him. So they were afraid that, you know, they would be visited by just right, goons right, right. Uh, mm-hmm. for, for directly depicting the president. And gotcha. They, yeah. That 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 faction won out. Okay. That's the sort of paramilitary violence that you like to see. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, that, I don't know. That Okay, that's a conversation for another time. Um, also, it's not the paramilitary violence you want to see. Like just anyone hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> don't actually think, think that's the case. I think that's extremely dangerous to civil society, but, uh, but not uh, outside uh, reality. Yeah, okay. So uh g- gently goes the Okay, so I didn't give a shit about songs of Showa. I know I know it's no. like a real it's a, like a realistic depiction of a lot of domestic abuse and and that's not it's not to be ignored and I I kind of enjoyed it as a story, but I I don't know if I have anything to say about it. No, I agree. It's is I think it's actually like a slice like directly out of his life. Um Yeah. Yeah, and that's it's a moment of transition between it, you know, like seeing things as a kid and an adult, but I don't think, yeah, I agree. There's not much to say about it. Yeah. The, the yeah, for me, the only thing that like when, when he, punch, when the kid gets punched in the fucking face, and oh, he starts bleeding all, yeah, no, no, I think it's the dad at that point. Dad, okay. it, like, yeah. And then like, it's right at the end. Don't, you know, and it's just like, Oh yeah. He's on, he's on all hands, hands and knees. Yeah. And his nose is just fucking bleeding all over the ground. Like I, and just to look at it, you know, he's not panicking, he's not crying, he's just kind of, I don't know, just kind of experiencing it. He, that that seems to be like how, because it's Tadao, uh, but it's it's not, but it is. Um, it's kind of how, I think it's also significant, like he's looking at blood uh, in, in that moment and, and considering the job that he's going to have. Uh, oh, shit. And, and, yeah, good point. And, uh, it just... 
yeah, at the end, then it dries up and it's at his knees and then he leaves, you know, and that's, that's, that's the, the last kind of thing. He goes looking for his mom, but then, and then ends, ends up, up on the street. red light district. Yeah. 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 And one, yeah, that, that's, it's, oh, sorry. I was going to say it's extremely potent as a symbol of, yeah. of like the artist's trajectory and, and past experience, but I, like, I don't, yeah. Yeah. What were you yeah. going to say? There's just like one artistic touch. I really like that story where like the kids are like earlier on in the story, these kids are like watching this woman dance in the street. They're kind of cat calling her. Like they're probably like, mm. I don't know, like yeah. 13, 14, just being like, yeah, like maybe I'll come visit you. She's like, Oh, I'll come by and see, find out. And there's like, maybe I will. And then at the end, the, the kids like wandering the red light district and like all that sort of like, sexual energy is suddenly very threatening like just sort of like confusing and yeah you pervert come on i'll show you something nice where are you going oh, man? Shit. Something? like they're talking oh, about like, my goodness yeah. yeah yeah you're right yeah 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 oh geez man i'm yeah i'm totally i'll i'll buy that yeah there's this yeah it's a juvenile engagement with sexuality and then it's just like no <laughs> this is yeah now you're thrown out there and like holy yeah. shit this world is terrifying <laughs> like you don't you you have no idea what you're getting into yeah yeah yeah, and it predates like meth and shit like that. Like I'm sure there's a lot of like his obviously alcohol's greatly yeah. affected all of this, but the the you know like many of the many of the drugs that we associate with it with this sort of reality uh, do not exist yet, and and you know also there's no guns, and I'm not saying like it's as sanitized as a consequence, but it's it's a little different, and and what you what you end up what you might focus on as an adult uh, maybe maybe changes. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of the violence of sexuality. Interesting. Yeah. Um. The other one I really liked Manhunt. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Um. But again, it's another thing where I'm not quite sure what I want to say about it. Like, I like this idea of this. Um, I guess we can just mention the phenomena, right? Because it's like mm-hmm. it's another slice of Japanese society that it, like I didn't know about. Makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. But that. Um, do you want to? Oh, I was just thinking about how it like it may be like I agree. Yeah, it's it's uh, it is another slash of you know like yeah it's just like here's the the working relationship which we're gonna see again in. Uh, <laughs> gently goes the night or whatever it's called <laughs> yeah definitely uh, um but uh i was just i was just like okay so the first two ones are very much like a like again this might come down to the curation but uh it's it's the, you know portrait of the artist as a young man and then it's like the artist as a young man as a boy and so the, it's all these boys stories and then all of a sudden this is like this is the first if it's a it's a transition in like it, if it is autobiographical, it's much looser now, and it and it's it's more of a sublimation than we've seen up until now in in the short stories presented. Very true. Uh, and so like it's, you know, and again, I I don't I don't maybe there's probably a bunch of works that surround this, but it's like what what happens when you take that fundamental attitude that those those sort of mission statements that we've seen and then you you see what happens when he writes a story about an accountant um trying to escape his life and why and and how society tries to capture you after you've tried to escape from yourself yeah uh, which is a different a different sort of struggle a different sort of like engagement with with sort of larger oppressive forces it's it's much more mature than the other things which which weren't immature but yeah and i think it very much um well not anticipates because i like that sort of work culture was very oppressive even then uh Mm -hmm. like in japanese you know like when you're when you literally say like sleep is part of the salary man's job too like you're like all of your life belongs to work right um so it's it's i think it recognizes it's it's engaging with that space or the the the, um dissatisfaction in society uh with those with that expectation that that your life is your job yeah yeah which Um, uh i guess we can go ahead talk a little bit about the uh yeah so it's basically the story of a guy who um 
he just up and disappears. And so there's this phenomenon, like this real phenomenon in Japanese society. Uh, shit, what? I don't know if I wrote down the uh, the uh, the name for it, but um, it just oh sorry yeah johatsu they call it the okay. evaporating people. Uh, Jesus. So, okay. Yeah, it comes well, then they re- this, yeah. yeah. They they talk about it like they 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 call it van- vanishing men. Yes. In this story. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Yep. Yeah. So it comes into use in the 60s and then again in the 90s to the present. Uh, but apparently, uh, like in the 60s, it related more to this idea of like people just like stepping out on their wife, never like just walking away, disappearing into the countryside. Jesus. Um, yeah. Okay. It happened a lot. Uh, yeah. And so um, it's about people just slipping through the cracks. And so this guy disappears from his family and, um, turns out that he's been like at the seaside town he just like he's totally obsessed not even obsessed he just kind of like keeps going back to this like stripper to the strip club uh and uh he's transfixed by her she's holding the stage and so uh these reporters finally track him down they're like oh like we're gonna do the story on you it was a big success for them uh actually they Mm -hmm. were they were writing this report the whole time and just kind of like just kind of doing the detective work trying to find him and they finally track him down and they're kind of interviewing him just trying to figure out like, you know, what's, what's going on in your head? Like, what, like, what were you doing there? And he just kind of doesn't even know. Like he just felt this urge to, to disappear into the countryside. Um, and it's interesting. I like how they, like, you know, they're, they're doing this detective work. You know, we tried talking to your, your closest friends, your, your family, your neighbors, but none of them actually knew anything about you. Like you're just, yeah. you're just this blank space. So that wasn't going to get us anywhere. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's this weird element of him, you know, as they as they go through these different towns trying to follow his trail, like he he was walking around all night at this inn that he went to and like wearing this mask. And the, did you catch that mask? Like, is it a mouse? Is it a is it a monkey? I'm not sure. It is. Fuck, I don't know, man. I yeah, I didn't I'd, I'd like because it's making like these squeak squeak noises. But I'm like, is that a mouse? Yeah, I went through the same oscillation. I'm like, is that a monkey mask? Is that a mouse? But yeah. it's like it's definitely like it's an animal. It's uh some something that's not human yeah uh, yeah i wanted it to be a monkey mask because there's a famous haiku that goes basically um year after year on the monkey's face a monkey's face so just um oh jesus christ yeah okay just i'll like buy the monkey yeah like, all right well you yeah. sold me yeah that's a monkey mask <laughs> yeah just the True idea that like, these things don't yeah. change or like that's it's you know just yeah you're not escaping your your nature is, is what i take that to mean um well that's interesting. Okay, let's assume for the moment that that's true. So, the if if that's true, let's yeah. The, then it's it's kind of there's an irony within that because like there's he is trying to. So so one of the things I noticed about this story, and I think you you already touched on it, is is that he he's just in this impression, but he's not a substance. Uh, I think they even use the word impression while they're talking like there's no there's nothing inside and the the opening story and this is when i talk about this is this is when negative space interested me the most there's the image at the beginning of the um, uh the erotic dancer you know it doesn't seem stripper is appropriate um true and yeah yeah and it shows her on the stage and he's talking about her confidence you know she's so confident she you know uh, but she's depicted completely blank in this in this black space of all these men, um, and th- like so there's there's so many there's so many images, and then you, you look at the next page, and like someone doesn't exist, you know, like it's just all shadows, but you see the yeah, outlines, and and that's this guy's life, you know, like he, um, what do, what does he say when it, like this isn't the same metaphor, but he's you know he he finishes his work one day according to his own account. I was unable to move like a puppet its string with its strings cut. I was paralyzed, creeping up from my toenails. God, that's creepy. Gradually, I felt my body begin to disappear. Um, and yeah, he's just he just becomes this like this internal na- like he doesn't he was only ever what he was on the outside. Um, and he can only conceive of himself within the role, you know, the, the the within these duties, within this aspect uh with it within this like these roles and there's you know i guess it's ultimately trying to indicate that there's no interiority uh within 
Japanese society, within Japanese work culture. Yeah, within and these, there's that, like, yeah. There's that really Go cool uh, couple of panels where it's like, it's literally the image is dissolving, uh, becoming less and less distinct of his face. And he says, uh, there I was, physically present, but no one paid yes. me any attention. Though even yep. before that, did anyone really see me as part of society, as a regular employee of a company, as the head of a household? And now having lost my place in society, who am I? I can feel myself disappearing again. Mm-hmm. And it's not that he lost his place in society. He just kind of abdicated it. He doesn't um, know what it is. Yeah, he just doesn't yeah. see the value of it or the meaning of it. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like, Ugh. and, and I, and I, the story, if nothing else, wants to parallel something of the, the, emo, like the emotional heft of that experience like like what that means is somehow tied to the locomotive uh and i i don't have a thesis about this i i just i just think that like the the recurring image of the locomotive the fact that he's like you, you know just standing there next to it i felt absolute peace yeah um and it and the only reason it it's you know one there's i guess there's a couple of reasons why i would draw attention to it and you know one the story wants me to two it's drawn in a completely it's in that negative space it's this like imposing big you know like like president sato uh just like a a monumental image of 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 black inkiness that uh is you know also some sort of aspect of modernity but like an old school modernity like a 19th century modernity you know, like a yeah. like so that you can tie nostalgia to this type of modernity, and uh, it's it's as if you know there there is a yearning. Uh, yeah, to, and what is the image of a train too? Is just like it's something that can carry you from one place to another fast. Like it's a it's a, it's a mm-hmm. possibility of travel. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's kind of an that's why I don't have a thesis because it's kind of an ambiguous image for that reason. Like, yeah, like one 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 nostalgia is to go back to one's home but like if a train is literally about not staying at home so then you're left you're left with like a literally ambiguous image but it still nonetheless ties the two things together um yeah yeah so creepy like you're right you're right also about the uh the dancer the iraq because he they're saying like you know he told her that you wanted the same thing that she did at the club and he takes her to his hotel mm. room and she's like fine like this is a bit creepy but you know the like after seeing this serious look on your face she burst out laughing uh mm-hmm. it seems like you invited her two or three times for a 20 minute show and she's like fine as long as you don't touch um and uh but he has no memory of any of this stuff he's like did i do that that doesn't sound like me like he's just like such a blank state it is it's really interesting uh it's it is a very cool story very surreal well I, there's yeah because you know, I don't remember what happened. It's like I'm, I, it's like I am inside your story, and it has nothing really to do with me. Uh, and that, that's, again, it, like, wow, that's another ambiguity. You know, like, and it, I don't know, it, it plays around with questions of uh, how we frame our memories uh, and our yeah. experiences of things. You know, he's just like, well, it's, I just feel, I've, and. Um, this is, this is far afield, but I'm, I am, uh, reminded of my glancing understanding of sort of Holocaust studies is my understanding is that, uh, some Holocaust survivors will have memories that, uh, cannot be true. And, and I don't, I don't say this to deny the Holocaust in any respect, but, you know, just like the aspect of, of memory, which is malleable, uh, they'll right. have memories in some instances of like, yes, I was in this camp with so-and-so, but the individual you know but they saw it in a movie right oh and, wow. but the, but the historical record is like no you couldn't have been with so-and-so because he was in camp x over there you know and you weren't um and so even that even that sort of like indelible like one would imagine that does what you know you can't fuck around with your memory of being in a death camp right maybe no, you can't but you know the it, trauma yeah. can do yeah. strange things to your memory well, and even, but no, no, I, th- I think living with the human brain can do strange things to your memory, right? And living in a mass media culture can do strange things to your memory. That's, I think that's True. the thesis, uh, is that, you know, like that they might've remembered, but we recreate our memories all the time. And, and so like this guy, um, so I'll leave that to the side as like an extreme example of, of the human capacity to sort of rewrite or not understand one's memory. And this mm-hmm. story, you know, this is kind of the story of like someone who's getting swept up maybe in 
in a media creation, uh, which is somehow also based on fact. Uh, like they, they've got that investigator all the time. Like this guy that's sweating him, you know, like on his tail. Yeah. But he also is like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I <don't, laughs> yeah, exactly. I, this, none of this jibes with what I understand to be the case, you know? Yeah. Um, like no one can get to the core of this story, which I, I guess is really the, uh, the overall impression that uh, Tadao wants mm-hmm. to convey. And I did not know that that was a real thing. Um, yeah, so cool, my, eh? Yeah, and that was the first, like, and, and that's why I went to that that Holocaust story is because I, I, you know, I one, I often think about it. Um, and I wish it, I, I don't know if it's true. I should probably, like, make sure I'm real secure on that fact. Um, but the, just this idea of, like, today I was trying to give it, like, it might actually my thirst my first thought was the dancing disease um is you know they, they, that idea of like these mass hysteria uh, it, um th- things that occurred in history where like everybody danced and they couldn't stop dancing and they danced until they passed out and i just thought about this wave of individuals like disappearing just walking away from their families right like a, like like a pied piper thing like like this mass perfectly you know like i'm not going to say reasonable because humans are weird but you know this thing that you might experience in history of of mass uh uh fuck behavior let's just call it that uh because it's part of the script at that time right and yeah and that was like kind of the cop the idea of like copycats and stuff like that yeah yeah uh and the, yeah, anyway, that's where my that, that's just wild. And but like what Tadao wants to put at the center of it is this just this massive alienation. Like, yes, but but he changes his thesis later on. My second thought was about trash market and which yeah. we don't. But just that just that. That line where the professor is like, you know, like what it's like to wake up when you're like at the bottom of the fucking heap one day. Shit, where was it? Uh, yeah, one day. It's like a devil comes and suddenly everything turns gray. Everything starts to look sad. And there's just like this outline of a fucking dog. It's heartbreaking when that happens. You're finished. You just walk out and there's nowhere to go and with nowhere to go. Nothing you can do about it. Maybe that's it. And then the next line is like, hmm, family gets dumped. That's what's sad. And the last line is like, I don't know why, but they just don't matter. And so it's just this mass on we, this mass like resignation on the part of men that the economic you know like there's an economic downturn uh like it's all mythologized it's all turned into like everything turns gray and it's like no dude you lost your job because the economy sucks and you you know (laughs) (laughs) that's all that happened you abandoned your family because you like lost your status i think that there must be something profoundly disorienting with the like the changes that japanese society would have went through like in that 20 year period like from being like super militaristic culture to being like, well, we're, we are going to go into high gear as economy. And like, we are, you know, we're, we're working with the Americans now. And <laughs> like, so everybody just mm-hmm. got on board. Yeah. Like these are the people who just didn't make that switch, you know? Yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. I, but, I, I mean, I think it also could be like what you're saying, like in, in many cases, the mass, like a mass hysteria or, or like, uh, what do you call it? Mass movement movement or i'm yeah the hysteria is the word i go for first and, and but that's only because yeah. like that's like a verbal tick and then you're like well you don't really want to call it that um yeah but i don't know though but I, I honestly i'm just i'm just i didn't know that this was a thing i'm just like this is where my my thoughts first go but i can't I don't know. It could honestly, it could just be as simple as like a society in which it's understood that you can just abandon your fucking family. And so you get poor and then everybody got poor all at once unexpectedly and they all abandoned their fucking family and then they <laughs> yeah. mythologized it afterwards. You know, like I, I could be, yeah. I don't, I don't, could that's not off the table as well. You know, like it's, yeah. Um, and I don't even know how many people were talking about. Like, it, yeah. Is, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, wow, my brain's like going a mile a minute on this. I, on the one hand, I love it as a thing that exists, and yeah. uh, the other, that doesn't bode well for fucking. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> Imagine well, we had that well, here. I guess, actually, you know, it's a good segue is uh, mm. to J- 
gently goes the knight because like this is the this is a guy oh, who's yeah. having some trouble with his post war experience. Yes, yeah, yeah. Sure. Fuck. This story I, is like uh, I had to read this a few times, I just had to sit with it. It's it's fucking it's something. Yeah. I don't uh actually and even the uh, opening images of like a young man with a knife, he's gonna stab this girl in um in a towel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it, it's just like yeah, I guess that's like the central like you know, it it's it's almost it's like a B movie, not even a because they they don't I guess they exist at that time, but you know kind of like a Harlequin serial killer cover, you know like yeah. the, you know the the vixens in danger. Like and kinda, yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. That's the word. Yeah, and then it opens up, you know, just domestic sphere. Here's that naturalism again, just yeah. to show that it's the real world. Uh, yeah, and they're just fucking worried about the heat. Another horror trope, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, and this guy, so basically the protagonist in this story is, uh, uh, I guess, like a middle-aged man who, who went through the war. Uh, now he's like, people seem to really find him to be a respectable guy. Uh, his son, yeah. like, worships him. And mm-hmm. I, like, he's just like, you know, He's like, yeah, I just want to be like you, dad. You're awesome. And, you know, the mom's like, you're embarrassing your father. And it's just sort of like this awkward moment. Then when he gets mm-hmm. out, he's doing yard work and he's just like so angry. He's just like, daddy's great. Want to be like daddy? Said like a grade school student. Well, fine. Let me tell you something. Maybe that's what you think. But how can you not be embarrassed in being that in front of me? Basically, you're like, yeah. son, you're a piece of shit. Why would you look after me? And then he puts a cigarette out on a worm. Oh, and, good. Uh, I love that page. Oh, yeah. my God. And, he, like, and then he grinds it out with his shoe. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's actually where I saw Tomine the most. Uh, in that, like, he, like Tomine is not that cruel, but, like, this sort of sequence. I don't know. It just, it seemed reminiscent. Like, that final, like, sandal in the, in the. I think it was actually just that last panel with the with the sandal rubbing out the worm after burning it yeah. with a cigarette. He's yeah. Pulling out, he's got a scythe as he's like cutting uh, weeds and stuff like that. Yeah, he's just. So here's the implication of this story for me is that like although although his flashbacks to the war are again it's you know it's like wh- whenever we go into somewhere dark and and real it's always it's given a very visual cue, you know, we're going to end up in these like cross hatched images. It can be really dark and we're going to go into that space where like there's sort of monumental events occurring or, or, or existences or beings. Uh, and yeah, he goes in there and like, he's not shown to do anything bad, but I, you know, I read, I read this story to, to take it that like, yeah, he was just, he just like, he raped a bunch of women in the army. I think uh, so too. Yeah, and he was just like super into it. Um, yeah, and even like the like the, his dream is opening this giant door, and like it's this tunnel space that he's going into. And it's like you right. know you could read into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah, or just so, yeah, just the space within him. There's this giant door that he's repressing, and he just yeah. wants to kind of open it. You know, I think it must be that. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, so he's like. He just work, you know, he works at his job, but like he's has stomach problems and all sorts of shit. His doctor doesn't think it's cancer. He's like, you know, you need to take some time off. And his boss, uh, just like, yep, yeah, we're work slowing down. We're gonna give you some time. So he doesn't know mm-hmm. what to do with himself, and he just mm-hmm. ends up in this red light district, and he meets this woman, mm-hmm. and she's also fucked in the head. <laughs> Fair, yeah, yeah. This is one of the. I, <laughs> I don't know, man. The story, uh, just like she, so. Basically, like it's pretty clear that she also like consent is obviously uh, like super important. So I'm not gonna say that like she's yeah, looking yeah. for this, but I she does seem to be excited by the possibility of danger. She seems to be drawn to him mm-hmm. because she senses that there's something a bit off about this dude. Yeah, no, and it's fine. They're like I don't know, girl, girls sometimes like to be taken you know in 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 consensual like sort of uh you know rape fantasy scenarios and and, and this girl appears to be one of them um but Absolutely it takes place, she does. yeah and you know like within within the space of this story like that's how she's presented so we'll you know we accept it right yeah um and but it also you know and and it 
but I, but I don't feel that it's actually taking place in any sort of reality because like there's like his wife or whatever is hiding behind the trees. Is that during his wife? This whole I thought it was just an old lady. Well, I guess yeah. I um, hmm. Let me go back to what she looks like. No, it it's kind of like an like a different version of the wife. You know, again, this comes out of the cartooning maybe. But yeah. the you know the hairstyle and everything is is very similar. Maybe it's an older version of the wife. Yeah, uh, I was like a Twin perhaps. Peaks sort of moment if that's true. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, either way, it's kind of like she, what what's she doing just hiding behind the tree? Like he sees her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he turns around, question, you know, and the and he kind of pauses and then looks back at her, and so yeah, it's it's taking place. I feel somewhere else. Uh, yeah, maybe. You know, or well, or not. But he, you know, either I, I think it kind of works either way. But I don't. I, it's not. Yeah. Apparent. Um. So the yeah okay well I think I think actually there's this idea of of alienation that that we're and this emptiness that we saw in um. The fuck was it called? The uh, <laughs> where the guy just been manhunt. The uh, something kind of like that. Like he's obviously very upset and he's obviously working through it. But the moment they're like, "Hey, take some time off," <laughs> he just like he goes to this place. Yeah. Uh, not just not just the red light district, but this whole fucking psychodrama. Um, and part of it is, I don't know if it's a concern, but it's maybe like an like a like a reflection of of anxieties at the time. Like there's so much pornography in this, not pornography, but like, you know, sex and, and women and, and sort of like in this, in this instance, you get the impression that it's like a young woman who likes the newest songs, you know, like she's hip, you know, she's like the, the dangerous female youth that you got to be worried about. Yeah. He mistakes Uh, her for a college dude. She's like, no, no, I'm definitely like, I'm a working woman. I work. Yes. yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's kind of taken, she's kind of like, she doesn't explain why, but just like something happened and, uh, I just, I didn't, I want, I didn't feel like being there today. So I just left. Yeah. yeah. Well, so maybe like him. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, both yeah. out of, and then they just go into this space. Yeah. She's so like flirtatious and so like coy about everything. It's really interesting. Uh, like the one, so she's like, you know, she's just kind of like into this guy. Like, I bet you, I bet you were in the war. I bet you killed people um like just kind of creating this idea of him as someone dangerous like right off the bat Mm -hmm. Uh, but then when he's like he starts telling her about his dream uh and that's when she's like seriously offended and creepy like you know like oh that's gross that's creepy um Mm -hmm. yeah my father screams in his sleep he probably dreams about killing people or seeing corpses dreams I don't see any corpses, but even in the middle of the day, I'm inside a cave and there's this huge door and I put down my pistol and try to open it, but then it's over. And she's like, ew, gross. Let's talk about something else. So it's just the, when confronted with the reality of like a soldier who's like gone through trauma, she's like, no, but like, stop mm-hmm. talking about this. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in something else. But after that, she's all like flirtatious again. Yeah. That is okay. So uh, sorry, uh, this kind of ties in. Uh, and again, he comes back to Trash Market. Um, he's holding a match, right? And there's that image in Trash Market where that where the lieutenant, not the, the lieutenant, the soldier, um, he's holding the the lit match to that woman's open legs. Oh shit! Is this the? Yeah. Think this is the guy? Well, I don't know. I, I on no, I don't think so. I don't think there's a continuity outside of the image, right? I just. If it is, if it is that we're we're taking the um, the open door to the to the cavernous space, right? If uh, yeah. it, if if we were to just like track that image over Suge's sort of um, I don't know a trajectory at this point, then you know, like it, it's like he's like here, here it's a metaphor. Here you can think about it, but over here, here's what I really meant. You know, it's a, it's a, drawn it's a lit match in front of a vagina. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It is just funny uh, that he's like drawn very similarly. Hmm. 
Oh, well, yeah. Is, is he drawn very similarly? Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I think he's just not a good. <laughs> yeah. Like, though, he's like very him. similar. Holy shit. Yeah. I'm looking at him right now. Like a couple, but like a bunch even... of years and like, just like really hard drinking and like losing your yeah, and Like that could be this dude. Holy shit. Fuck. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm on board now. Why not? Did he's not a professor though, but they call him. No, no, he's yeah, the nobody lieutenant. Nobody really knows. Yeah, yeah people are like, yeah. I, think, I think he might be lieutenant. Maybe he's like a big company guy. Oh, uh, man. I don't he's know. Our, it's interesting. I, I'm into it now. That's it, man. That's my cannon. That's my head cannon. And yeah. that's what you know, he hugs that woman after they pay her. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. Jesus. All You're right. Not this I'm into low, that. Man. Yep. No, not in, this uh, one. Yeah, in trash market. Yeah. So, yeah, this is like, yeah. So it's like he's apparently he suggests that they walk along this uh embarkment like just totally alone desolate space and she's like oh like this is your idea come on yeah and uh yeah and then that woman yeah there's an old lady following it could be his wife could be yeah or just like yeah just kind of like an older version um and yeah. then he like and he throws her down like my first thought wasn't that he was like taking her. It was like he was like getting her out of gunfire. Like he's he's like, get down, you know, and she's like, Ugh, you know, and she goes to explore. Um, and then, yeah, and then he's all sweaty. And then like, yeah, and, then he, and it's and she's in this she's in the weeds watching. She's all sweaty. Uh, you know, it just it just feels like it's happening. Yeah, it's all pervy. Yeah. And why does she say somebody help, you know, like. He's already so he's, he's already within this imaginative, you know, within the space. He's already raped her, the young girl that he's taken out here, out here. Well, and, he hasn't. Uh, he actually, because he hasn't, because he's like, he basically gives her an out. Like, if you don't want to do it, then why don't you scream for help? Go on, scream. Come on, do it. Mm, and she yeah. just like, there's several panels of her not doing it. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then uh, he's like enough, get dressed, and then um, so then the old lady screams, "Somebody help! There's a rapist!" Mm-hmm. And like they're, I think that they're both like upset that this has happened. Yeah, like the girl says, "Stop! Don't call anybody, please!" And mm-hmm. he's just like, "Bitch, bitch, bitch!" And the yeah. lady's snickering. She's like, "Yeah, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho! Everyone, there's yeah. a rapist." Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, and I took I took it a little different. I, I think it, he couldn't. He wasn't into it because she wasn't screaming. Um, oh shit! Oh wow! I didn't even think of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But she's mad at him. Like she's like the college student is mad at him. She's like, "What are you waiting for? Like you haven't all you did was take my clothes off. I don't want to be part of this shit." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." He's like, he's confused. Like you mean? And then she starts going pervert, pervert, and starts like flirtatiously running and like laughing. Like yeah, oh, yeah. Laughing. Yeah, she's like, he, you ooh, you come pervert. here, titty titties. Yeah. <laughs> <So weird. laughs> so you stupid and he's just like all the thoughts are like x x x x x x x yeah that's right right yeah. that's, that's what i am <laughs> um <laughs> that's the end yeah, yeah right and you know and it, and it and it connects it it connects like military like japanese military culture to uh this culture of rape but also this like this idea that like women are into it and but then there's this Older women aren't into it, uh, but they also kind of are. It's a game for them to be against this. You know, like they're ultimately complicit. Uh, yeah, I don't like. I don't know what to read into this. Like that. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, really hard yeah. to. Mm-hmm. That I think that's yeah. I have a very strong sense of confusion of how this ends and like what yeah. it's meant to be communicated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's just about the darkness of like, you know, like underneath you know, repression and. Uh, well, if I was being really cynical, I would say that the the older woman represents like acceptable social mores, and the young woman uh, represents oh, fuck I don't know what what men want to get up to, uh, and and an idea of what men think women want to get up to, uh, and uh, and this yeah, and then what society gets up to, and what men in society get up to, and then like the interaction between those three forces. Which is just like, yeah, everybody's against it, but they accept it. Uh, you know, everybody apologizes for it and has a hee 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 ho 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 game about it. And then, you know, yeah, but she doesn't. Yeah. She's like, no, I don't want to be part of that hee 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 ho ho game. Like, I don't want to be swept up in that like societal discussion about this game that we're playing. Um, 
and uh yeah i don't know at, at the end yeah. it just comes down to like yeah men rape women and uh, society accepts it and maybe um, it's just a co- like sort of like a condemnation of like this guy is trash like this is uh this is yeah. a respectable like father figure you know like uh, who went to war and mm. did all these yeah maybe, oh, know, maybe I, something like that well actually yeah but that's that's it because i don't think for a moment that Tadao is like like this is great yeah yeah, yeah, that that is not the message of this. It's like this no. is, you know, like this is there's a there's something happening here. Yeah, look at um, this creep. Yeah, yeah, but that that's like without more context, I that's what I come up with, and I'm not sure if that has any legitimacy. Uh, yeah, I think this is sort of like my like I like I like these sorts of story like you know this sort of uh, storytelling. Um, mm-hmm. Like the the sort of like sli- again I, I keep calling it slice of life I I feel like that really is what it is, um, mm. but um, I never I, I've, I a lot of the time I don't really know what to take away from it because it's like mm. they often leave leave things so ambiguous you're I guess I guess that's the point just to to make your own meaning yeah. I don't yeah, know that's a that's a no it's a funny thing about that genre I know what you're talking about um. But like I have enough of that in my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm confused about stuff. Yeah, As like the I don't, artist, I don't. please help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me an idea, you know. And he's just like, yeah. no, nope, it's just me, like expressing just the same bullshit. Lines, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, right. You know, and that feels that feels very much a piece with uh, to Dow. Yeah. Um, and I, Although, I, I on guess on the other I, hand, yeah, go on. Trash market is uh oh, yeah like, well, that, okay like thank that you really yeah, kind of wraps up in a way that yeah 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 that's what i'm gonna say like mm-hmm. yeah this one's uh I, I didn't i don't have a i uh you know as much as i liked it and as much as i was like fuck this thing's holy shit this story um i, I like it it really just feels like a summation of everything that came before it and an addition to um but that said I'll begin with my favorite piece, and Matthew really enjoyed uh, the opening of Trash Market, where that guy like just starts flexing. Oh <laughs> yeah, just, just, like it's flexing his pecs. And, yeah, yeah, it just opens up and he just takes his shirt off, and everyone's it's so silent, and they're just watching this like this guy, this like bodybuilder kind of guy, and they're just like, yeah, you know, um, yeah. and that and for a for a story about how like everybody's being weakened and eaten like physically or like on like yeah. at a vampiric level uh yeah by you're this selling industry. your blood to live yeah yeah and but the, like it just opens up with this like heroic masculine like this this uh virile masculine oh good point yeah yeah even this and he's doing it yeah he's showing up too and they're all like oh you know like it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know okay within within the idiom of Japanese comics, I don't know what the silent panel means. Like, often the word balloons look like thought balloons, but they're not thought balloons. Uh, and they have the silent bits that, like, it has an additional meaning that I'm missing. In Western comics, it looks like they're like, oh, you know, they don't have a thought. Um, or they're, but here it seems like they're mumbling or something, or like, oh, you know, like, I, it's, um, yeah. there's something missing. I think there's something lost in the translation there. Which is difficult to capture. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or something that they want to say that they can't. Or because um, <laughs> it's the guy who's like kind of like clinging to him does seem to have a bit of a you know homosexual vibe to him. They like they they're less polite about um, what uh, what they think about him. Um, yes. But, yeah. I'll yeah. Say. yeah. But he's kind of clinging to the guy, and he just mm-hmm. like, the the strong guy just kind of throws him off. And there's this sort of like. I've seen in the city I live in, the mm-hmm. downtown core, there's like always a party of people uh, who will just kind of like sit. And, you know, it's like it's a lot of them, a lot of homeless people and things like that. And like just mm-hmm. depending on the day, what corner it is. But there's like people gathering, chilling out. And it's this sort of talk. It's this sort of energy. I found mm-hmm. that really interesting that like it just it felt really familiar. Yeah. And like when the cop might like the when the cops show up and they arrest that guy. And they're all like surrounding him, and they just start like smashing a uh, a can uh, to intimidate can, the cops. Yeah. yeah, 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 bang. 
bang, you know, and they're just like that thing. And they're all just there, you know, all those bodies and, and they're taunting and, you know, do, 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 do. even, even the guy at the beginning, um, who's treated as a, you know, like a worthless homosexual, he's part of the taunting as well. Yeah. And when the, when they see the, uh, the big dude later, uh, mm-hmm. like they're like, they're like, first they're kind of like, just like, fuck up guy, but like they're friends again, you know? And there's, I think that there's an element of, uh, like carnival to this too. It's like, it's a party and, and it's just sort of like, well, very much the, uh, like the low can become high at any moment. And that's, that's one of the, that's their moment of victory over the, over the police, right? So they've, they've yeah. intimidated them and it's, uh, you know, the, suddenly everything's looking good for a moment there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It ends up like that guy's like it began with that dude flexing and it ends with that dude flexing. In the <laughs> yeah, but it's like yeah, but, he's like part of the party now. Yeah, and everyone's so happy even after that like failed like sex <laughs> extravaganza and the dog's happy and like it's just like. Yeah. Oh, and it starts with them like like it's the low picking on the low like uh, yeah. the, the guy just like walks right up and kicks that dog in the ribs like it's just yeah. disgusting behavior. Yeah. And they're, yeah, they're just like all up, you know, they're just against each other all the time. But they're also like, they're just bored, you know. It's just yeah. watching these people are so fucking bored. They're like, I'm in line, you know. What what number are you today? I'm like 300. Like we're seeing like a thousand people a fucking day. That's yeah. crazy. That's so and many people there. I'm, yeah. That constant refrain of like, hey, you want a cigarette? Like, you got a cigarette? Can I buy a cigarette? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, been there. Like when you're poor, I'm like. And smoke, it's like that's very much a thing too. Yeah, it's like oh, I have them today yeah. or hand them out. Yeah, yeah, and they're all just like and they're just and they're just like they're together in their in their um. So you know, uh, Suga, to Dow's, he's not interested in labor, but he's very interested in class. Yes. Uh, you know, and and this is this is definitely like the underclass the. I'm not going to say subaltern because I don't think that's what's going on here, but it's like it's, you know, it's the down and out in uh, in Japan at this time. And he just wants to like, yeah, that that simple camaraderie and affect amongst them. Uh, yeah, you, like you already said, like you've I've seen these crowds. I've seen these crowds here, you know, in Toronto. They're they're definitely there, you know, like they we you get people who are down and out and they're going to fucking hang out and they're going to have a certain yeah. vibe. And uh, yes, yeah, they're passing time. Kind of, like sometimes yeah. it's friendly, sometimes it's not. Yeah. Sometimes it gets a little serious, maudlin, but uh, it flips. Yeah. And that guy, the um, the guy who may or may not be the uh, the dad from yes. the uh, was yeah. we just discussed. Uh, yeah. He's like they're like they're they're kind of like subtly mocking him the whole time. There's a real nice subtlety of like character in uh, Suge's work. Uh, I, I I I really find I respect that. Um, but it's like, you know, they're egging him on, like, tell the story about, you know, like, oh, like, oh, you have all these awesome stories about how many women you've gotten. And it's like totally gross. Like, tell us about that middle school girl you raped. That's a good one. And he's just like, like, to the credit, like, you hear nothing of this story. He's just like the guy, like, making weird faces. Then I shoved it in like this. And uh, <laughs> they're just like, yeah, that's a good one, man. But like, afterwards they're like no that guy there's no way this guy did anything like that like nobody believes him it's just sort of like this sad old drunk who just kind of shows up and like they're they're humoring him <laughs> so i'm just looking at it right now he's like oh the face is so weird the, yeah and yeah. it's just like silent and again it's another situation where like it's just these blank panels with these like these dots and these work these balloons and you're just like what is being communicated here yeah Woo. Uh, yeah, they're just like, yeah, there's like this moment, and even the dog, like, even the dog reacts to this. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you're like a the guy's hanging off the other guy. <laughs> like, Jesus yeah. Christ, they look horrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, and he just goes on, and he has these visions of, like, afterwards in the sun, of just these, like, these, like, sort of. I, I would say this is, you know, again, getting getting back to like the the mission statement, this like high meets low. So he's having this freakout session with the sun behind him, and then there's all these different depictions of women, like very artistic, very stylized. Um, you know, that smiling face with the top cut off, and like the sort of tribalistic, or or like there's yeah, and, and it just like enters into the space of like where high art is touching him from the sun 
Yeah. Uh, even though even though he's a fucking pervert and an asshole, like that's that's kind of what's happening in his brain. Yeah. Uh, it's probably also like like this guy literally is so old that like when he gives blood, like he just has to go like pass out in a flop house. So like he's like always oh, on, on the edge of like you know being not having enough blood. He's probably yeah. hallucinating a bit too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. She, yeah. Oh my goodness. That yeah. yeah. That scene after he takes yeah he gives blood and he's just like that. Just laying there. Uh, <laughs> I was a yeah. lieutenant in the military. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. That's awesome. So, yeah, yeah. that's so... And so, like, the whole... I guess he's sort of the protagonist, in a way. Um, mm-hmm. Because, like, the uh, the guys all, like, as they get their blood money, they're, they got, like, just big dick energy. They're, like, going over to the women's side. Um, and they're like, they're like, yeah, let's uh, let's go flirt. Let's go have some fun. And so they go as a pack, just go over and and uh, there's one girl there who's like, hey, I really need money. And he's like, well, like women have other things to sell. So they they decide just on a whim that they're going to like all pitch in a bit of the money they got mm-hmm. to uh, get this guy laid, the professor guy. And like that's that's really the the plot of this thing. If you want to if you want to say that it has one. The, that's the, fair. The through motion. Yeah. 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 Of course. And then when. Oh, go on. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, which is when they take his blood and this get this gets back to, you know, gets back to manhunt because they she takes his blood and he's fucking passing out. And then all of a sudden it's the train. Uh, it's the it's the steam train again and then the oceans. And then and then it gets to um, he's holding that the can't the the image of. Yeah, the the uh, the lit match between her legs. Yeah. Uh, and which isn't manhunt. That's gently, you know, it's just like it's this it's this. It, and that again, this comes down to curation. It just feels like this perfect sort of summation of everything that we've seen thus far. Yeah, all it feels the, like he's tying all these things together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the all the little ticks, um, uh, you know, like creative ticks. And then after that, yeah, yeah, you know, and then and then everything starts to come together after this. Actually, yeah. uh, actually, no. Then I, no, then it, then it gives the speech about like the disappearing men. Um, but oh, there no, also no, there's romanticism in that too. Like you know, this this is a great place. There are good people here, and they like, I was like, you're full of shit. This is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I guess the, then we then we move into uh, yeah the um, where they where they paid it to, to get him laid in front of everyone. Everyone's excited, and then he just like, I is he crying while he holds her? I think so. Yeah, yeah, it's like sort of like a, he like goes to her, he, he kind of like just he's really not into the idea. Um, yeah, he's yeah, he's crying. And then he just kind of goes uh, like she's lifting up her skirts, but he goes over, like begins to take down her blouse. And she has this like horrible burn that she's been covering up like on her yeah on her chest and uh, on her shoulder. And then he just kind of holds her and, and uh, they're just like, bummer, what do you expect? Uh, these guys have lost their money. But uh, yeah. it's fine. They're all having it. It starts to rain, and it's like, yeah, wow, what a relief! For, it's coming down. Except for the muscular guy, like he offers the old guy something. He's like he doesn't turn away at all. He he keeps his vision, you know. Like, and it, it, you could you could look at this as simply as like the artist and his muse. Uh, this is this is a moment of like him him interacting with Venus de Milo, but she's scarred. And he's scarred and it's the, you know, the moment where he lets out his sadness to his muse, you know, in that yeah. sexual embrace, you know, like in that, that, that idiom of artistic yeah consummation or whatever. But the, there's no consummation. It's just like I'm just crying. Yeah. yeah. Except that muscular, and I think the, the muscular guy is the guy who's like the whole time is like, you know, this seems kind of mean, like he might be a pervert, but this is mean. Uh, like, yeah. Like, I don't want to do this. And then like, mm. he's the guy who's kind of like smiling as they hug. So and yeah, he's kind of like, yeah, just like having a good time. I like that. Yeah. They have that. Uh, they even say it directly. Um, uh, you know, it feels like a, it's been a full day. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, it's been a good one. Mm hmm. Now that blood's going to squirt right out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <day. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. that line. It's it's not a happy ending. It's not <laughs> a happy ending. <laughs> For them it is. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. guess it's like 
I like that. They had that conversation too, uh, which also kind of puts a point on it where, um, uh, yeah, selling your blood, it's, it's just like a metaphor for, for having, like, it's really just a metaphor for what everyone's going through. Uh, like, you know, earning a salary. So these guys like, hey, you earn 1200 yen for two bottles. You can eat and sleep for days on that, or you can blow it at the bike track. Uh, but either way, you're pissing it away. And like, I mean, who isn't, who isn't making that choice when they get their paycheck, you know? I think they take it a little deeper than that. It's like you're literally feeding on yourself. I, I don't yes. think. Yeah, to to Dow understands that it's it's a little step above that. For sure, it, for it, it's exploit. Well, it's for anyone. It's the worst. You know, like imagine yeah. this. Fuck. And it is like you know, like you're you're eating your own like they, like and it's cap. You know, it's capital. You're you're taking blood and you're turning it into like some sort of commodity, which you're then like you're selling as a commodity, yeah. uh, but the, you know, like it, it, and you're little, and then you're eating the proceeds, but you're just like eat literally eating your own fucking body. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's like, yeah. it's so yeah. awful. That's it's true. just the worst sort of excess of capital. Like yeah. imagine we had these blood banks on every fucking corner. We would, we, we, well, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, I don't think yeah. we do this anymore. If I'm, if we do, we should be ashamed of ourselves. I think we kind of, uh, Yeah. Mm. probably have learned from i mean even they were talking about reform there's pressure for a reform movement for these places right and that's why you had to change that's why they crushed up placentas. Placentas. yeah yeah, yeah. Nope. exactly <laughs> takes Good a little stuff. while jesus yeah. christ but i guess like to to put a bow on on this story uh, and maybe on to in general it seems mm-hmm. like it seems like he's like he's looking for that like the vitality even even in these desperate situations that like there's stories to tell in them and uh and those moments really interest him yeah yeah that's fair uh that is a nice bow but uh i guess i have to ask you though um yeah. is <laughs> trash market guilty or innocent oh shit uh oh i should have considered this one I think uh, trash market is innocent. Um, it's a it's an innocent bystander. It's just been, uh, you know, there you can't prove that my client has had any sort of involvement in it. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's all just conjecture and hearsay. Uh, but uh, but I, if you want a reliable witness, then uh, then you're to douse your man. Yeah, yeah, you can judge for yourself. Um, I'm going to say that uh, it's also innocent. Um, but only because, um, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not big business's fault that people are poor and, uh, you know, like what they go through, it's just part of the natural order. And we, uh, thanks to Dao Suge for giving us a, an accurate record of, uh, of what that might look like if you had an artistic temperament. Um, yeah, you're, you're a scumbag lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> now all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. 